Um, so yeah, so salvage in the foot and ankle. Um, sometimes our job is easy because we're a foot and ankle surgeon. We like to fuse things, but uh, sometimes it's a little more difficult. So I think salvage is a big deal. We're saving more limbs. We're sort of trying to salvage more limbs than we were before. Um, but still, if you look at these numbers, three-fourths of people have a lot of pain at seven years. And kind of like we touched on yesterday, these are guys that are mostly young gentlemen who are going to live for a while and have pain for at 10 years, at 15 years, at 20 years, and so what, what do we do? Um, so even though we're saving them, we think we still have a lot of work to do once we've salvaged it. Um, so for me, there's a lot, it's more, there's no right answer, and most of the time it will come down to some type of fusion, but I think that you have to figure out how you're going to approach it. So the three questions I ask, or the th three things I look at when I have a foot or an ankle coming in, um, is is there a deformity? Where's the pain coming from? And what kind of bone do I have available? So I think this is a good, you know, simple calcaneal fracture, but there's a mild deformity. If you look here, their first ray is sort of stuck up. They've got a little bit of a, um, a varus deformity at the heel, and they've got arthritis clear in the subtalar joint, but it's calc, so you also need to worry about calc um, calcaneal cuboid and things like that. So diagnostic injections can help you differentiate whether you need to do a triple or you can just do a subtalar, uh, just a subtalar fusion. Um, and sort of things like that to try and tease it out. Because when we have trauma, while there's obvious trauma here, there's always soft tissue injury or impaction injuries to other joints in the foot that may be developing arthritis in the same time. So when you're figuring out the deformity, I think the best, most important thing is to look at a person standing. Get, make sure you get weight-bearing films um, on x-rays, foot and ankle. And you can sort of see some subtleties where if you look at their hind foot, there's maybe a little bit of abduction and they're complaining of forefoot pain after this. There's a little bit of abduction here. that They don't have the same. There's a different bit of fullness. And then if you take a closer look at the x-ray, you're like, you know, maybe that first ray is a little bit malreduced. Um, and you see that more probably uh, if there is, um, if you have weight-bearing views. So that's just an important thing. Then I think it's important to sort of understand the bone that you have and remember that allograft is your friend. Um, make sure you get CT scans to sort of quantify how much you have. So. When you have a calcaneus that's got a malunion and subtalar arthritis, and you can sort of see they're already getting some impingement there anteriorly, you know, a bone block uh, distraction arthrodesis can work really well. And we used a lot of um, either iliac crest, the t like the two by two centimeter wedges, or if you get a one third ilium, that can provide you with a good structural graft to use to fix it. And a little bit like we talked about yesterday, you can. It's a little bit earlier to fix malalignments earlier rather than later, because as you can see here, there, there's sort of a shift, and you can only get it over so far when all the soft tissues are, are fit in. So I think that's sort of like we yesterday I talked about fixing calcaneal fractures. Try, trying to get this a little bit more aligned earlier may help you. Um, same thing when you're looking at calcaneous fractures. Um, don't forget you may need to do a triple, not just a subtalar arthrodesis. Um, because you can develop, as you can see, there's sort of a hind foot valgus, flat foot deformity, there's instability of tail navicular and calcaneal cuboid, and uh, think about that as well. So again, bone block arthrodesis, because there's all this bone loss, and fusion through the show part joints. So when I look at feet and when I'm trying to sort of restore alignment, get some bone stock, and fuse the arthritic joints, and if that means using four centimeters of allograft here, that's sort of the best thing we can do to try and correct this sort of breakthrough there and the flat foot deformity we have to sort of give him a foot that hopefully will potentially prevent arthritis at the subtalar joint, calcaneal cuboid joints, and ankle down the line. So in the ankle, there's a few more options, but they're not necessarily better. You know, you have fusion, you have replacement, you can do TTCs, and those decisions all sort of go based on how much they, how old they are, how high their level of function is, if there is deformity, and if there's any history of infection. Um, where this is someone who has a, an ankle that really looks like it's isolated ankle arthritis, the subtalar joint looks good. Depending on their age, they may do really well with a replacement or a fusion, uh, depending on what their goals are. But this is a case, I don't have, sorry, I don't have the original films, they're from a long time ago, we don't have them on file. If you have a little bit of malalignment in the ankle, you can actually try a supermalleolar osteotomy in somebody that's younger to try and save it. If there's a little bit of varus that you can't correct if it got caught late, but ultimately if they go on to an ankle um, arthritis, you can transition to a, a total. 
I am not a huge proponent of totals in general, but I think actually in a trauma setting, sometimes they are good for you, especially when you have subtalar arthritis. Um, if you end up trying to avoid a pantalar fusion, that's a really good scenario to me for a total ankle replacement. And in looking at the literature, they actually survive as well or better than people who get treated for ankle instability um, with total, for total ankles. So you can have simple things that are just sort of looks like an ankle fracture and it can go bad pretty quickly. Um, and unfortunately, you have to make sure you're looking at all the joints and TTC fusions end up being a bailout a lot of the time. Uh, sometimes you, if you have loss of bone sock, this is where you're going to look for femoral head allografts to replace it. Um, but in this person, certainly before I would do anything, I would see if I could try and save him his subtalar joint with a differential injection. Um, things that I think just are important to talk about with your patients when you sort of look at, these are, these are numbers pulled out of the LEAP study. Um, when they looked at the patients that had just hind foot and ankle injuries, so pilons, ankle fractures, foot salvages, and they compared them to their baloney amputations. If you just had a standard salvage, you did pretty good. That was the best group. But if you had a salvage that required an ankle fusion or a free flap, those are the people who really struggled. And actually, in that scenario, a baloney amputation did better. So I think that's an important toolkit, uh, tool for your toolbox. Um, is to be able to talk about baloney amputation and think about what your options are. And actually, if you really look at these numbers, while their sickness impact profile scores were lower, if you look at visual analog um, scores, they were lowest in the baloney amputation. And if you look at percent return to work, it was highest in the baloney amputation. Um, so just things to talk about and make sure your patients are educated on so that they can make an informed decision on what to do. Um, and so sometimes you get to the point where okay, there's too much deformity, there's too much bone loss, there's arthritis in multiple, multiple joints, and you may need to do things that aren't surgery. Um, getting into a good brace, getting into double metal uprights, custom molded uh, ankle, um, ankle foot orthoses are good options. Um, so this is an example, I just sort of show this. Sometimes the, you're salvaging things that are soft tissue. This is a case that ended up with our trauma guys, and it was treated outside, and the person, while it was just a simple ankle fracture, well, not simple ankle, but an ankle fracture, they actually developed a compartment syndrome from the extensive fixation done elsewhere and ended up with loss of their anterior and lateral compartments. So there is a new, sorry, let me see if the video plays. This, this is a new brace that's in development by the, um, through the military. It's really only available to certain people through hangar. Um, but this may be something that's a real option for people with lots of injury, lots of arthritis in multiple places. So this is a guy with no anterior, no lateral compartment who has this, it's called an exoskeleton, and it's a custom AFO, and they're able to sort of return to function. Now, his function is not nearly as good when he's not in the brace, but if you can get someone that's okay using a brace on a regular basis, it can provide them with a lot of things. I'm going to go back. This is the brace. This is actually what it is. So it sort of transfers it. It's uh, transferred so you get some patella tendon bearing and get unweighting of the foot. But sometimes you have uh, people that have injuries like this who have had multiple, multiple surgeries, a heel that's in varus, an ankle that's starting to degenerate, loss of the fifth ray, and it's hard to know what options are good for here, even for somebody that only does foot and ankle surgery, where to go. And after eight months of deliberation and meeting with a lot of people, we actually did elective baloney amputation. And I think that that's a reasonable option for somebody that has this severe injury. Um, so if anybody has any suggestions for me, these are two people that are in my office in the past month. Um, 20 years, or, or sorry, 12 years after an open calcaneal fracture who's got pain kind of everywhere in their heel, and somebody else who at some point had some trauma and has midfoot things. And I can think of a lot of things I could do. I can shave down this exostosis. I could potentially do a medial heel slot. Uh, a medial displacement calcaneal osteotomy and some sort of rotational osteotomy of the foot to bring that first ray down. And those are all options that a foot and ankle surgeon can provide to you, uh, depending on how much the patient wants to undergo a procedure that's going to take probably six, six to eight months to really get over. And the question is really is how much does that improve their function and relieve their pain? And uh, I think in all of these things, when we talk about salvage, it's important to let people know what realistic expectations are, that when you're talking about fourth, fifth, and sixth surgeries, um, the predictability of outcomes gets to s closer to 50-50 than anything else. And um, making sure you have exhausted bracing and uh, orthotics and things like that to just to provide comfort. 
So seriously, if anybody has any suggestions, especially on this one, uh, I'd love to hear them. Uh, that's it. Any questions?